Campanale was chosen to stand as the Lib Dem candidate in Sutton and Cheam at the next election, but he will find out tomorrow whether or not he's been deselected. The events of the last few months have led to David Campanale being let go from his job at a PR firm, and David joins me now. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. So, can you give us some background to this? Because my understanding of the Liberal Democrats is that it's, it's a broad church, so to speak. It's, 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 where, it's a place where people can have any religion or none. Uh, they're called, well, the clue's in the name, the Liberal Democrats. So what's going on here? That's exactly right. So the Liberal Democrats are an inclusive party and we welcome everybody, regardless of background, regardless of faith, whether they're trans, whether they're same sex. Um, it doesn't matter. You're all welcome to be in the Liberal Democrats. The difficulty is that not a, that message isn't always embraced by everybody. And in this particular constituency, Sutton and Cheam, the activists, since I was selected at the beginning of the year, said, now that we know that you hold Christian beliefs, um, we don't want to deliver your leaflets. But you weren't hiding these beliefs, were you? I wasn't hiding them. And I stood for the Liberal Democrats against Kwasi Kwarteng in 2019 in the last general election and trebled the vote because I'm a successful campaigner. Um, I raise issues of international injustice and I'm committed to making sure that the government are held to account. Now, the party knew that. That's why I was selected with one of the biggest turnouts in a selection for a Liberal Democrat parliamentary uh, seat. So the members support me, but um, the way in which council culture works, the moment a problem is identified, they really go for you. So, so it's a core group of activists within the yeah. party. Uh, now, I've read an account of what happened. It sounds very much like they called you in for a bit of an inquisition. Is this what happened? So that's right. So when people discovered that I hold uh, Christian beliefs, I was called to a meeting of about 30 people, 30 activists. And it was things like, well, if we'd known, you should have put your beliefs in your election literature. You should have described to us your background as a Christian activist. Um, these weren't things that I'd hidden. I, neither am I ashamed of them. Um, I think that the Liberal Democrats embrace all people of faith and they protect minority rights. It's absolutely forefront in what we believe in. But for these individuals, they didn't seem to extend it to people of faith. So the sorts of things that they were saying uh, were, we do not recognise your right to a conscience. I had that in a private conversation. Somebody rang me. They said that uh, you are religious, we are rational. We are building a secular party. Now, the Liberal Democrats are not a secular party. Um, as I keep emphasising, our, our uh, whole ethos is um, underpinned by uh, religious worldviews. I mean, my own inspiration are people like Tim Farron and Simon Hughes, people in the past like Charles Kennedy, our former party leader, and Shirley Williams, who are both pro-life Christians. And when I mentioned that to explain my own story, my own journey in politics, they said, well, Charles Kennedy, Shirley Williams, they're both dead, they're the past, we're building a secular party. Just to be clear, who are these people exactly and what is their role within the party? So we're talking about activists um, who might be standing for um, local election. We're talking about party officers. One said, you pulled the wool over, my, over our eyes. So they sort of got together uh, in a kind of group. Well, I don't know about you. that. that well, it was certainly I was summoned um, at somebody's house for the, what was a, a kangaroo court. I mean, they really went for me. This was a kind of lynch mob. I, I'm still in a state of shock that this well, can happen bizarre. in politics um, today. It's very odd because, I mean, surely, I mean, we've had this before with Tim Farron, of course, Tim Farron, who was leader of the Liberal Democrats, yeah. and that he had a lot of flack uh, for his uh, Christian beliefs. Now, he made the point, he made the case that he wasn't going to start applying his own views about, say, abortion or homosexuality to uh, official Liberal Demo Democrat Party policy. Is that the way that you would go? Yes. Yeah, so the way it works is that if you're elected as a, a member of parliament for any party um, on issues of conscience, that, they, that is to say the party doesn't place a whip, you're allowed to follow your conscience. So right. um, that's the key point. It's, I wouldn't be imposing my views on the party. What I, all I asked for was the space to allow on those non-whipped issues to pursue my conscience. So obviously I'm out campaigning for the Liberal Democrat Manifesto today. Our party leader, Sir Ed Davies, made a very powerful speech holding the government to account. We're determined to see the back of this government and I just want to be able to get on and campaign. I just want to emphasise that even if um, this vote goes against me tomorrow, um, I will appeal and I'm confident that because we are this inclusive party um, that I will win on appeal. Can you clarify for us what their fear is about you standing for, the, for Parliament? Well, they've never said. 
So at no time in writing have I been told what the problem is. There's the returning officer for this deselection process in writing in advance told the officers of the party, I can see no basis in David's performance for you, no grounds in it for you to be doing this. Uh, so Simon Hughes, who uh, was 35 years a Liberal Democrat MP in London, um, himself a Christian, um, pleaded. He, he went along to this meeting last Tuesday and he represented me and he, he pleaded with the members. He said, you know, you can't deselect somebody because they have pri personal and private beliefs. You know, that isn't what Liberals do. And he said, let's, let's pause, let's have mediation, let's do the sensible thing, let's have an investigation. And people started shouting at him. Well, I think this is a major problem and why the popularity of the Lib Dems has gone down, I feel. I mean, firstly, you had the, uh, the approach to Brexit, which was let's just right, run roughshod over this. But you're called the Liberal Democrats. That doesn't feel very democratic. And then you've got issues like this which don't feel very liberal. Well, I let's mean, be should the party change its name? Let's be absolutely clear that the Liberal Liberal Democrats have no, are a liberal party, we are a democratic party, that what we are seeing in just this corner of London is an aberration. This is not representative of who we are. Sir Edward Davey, the party leader, before he was selected by our members to be leader, he gave an interview in the tablet, which is a Catholic magazine, and he said that there is a, a, a wave of international intolerance amongst progressive parties and liberal parties but I guarantee to fight for rights of conscience of my MPs. Ed Dave is a churchgoer himself. He's an Anglican like myself, uh, like me, with, with his family. And I know that he, will, he is building an inclusive party. He's holding the government to account. And this is an appalling distraction from the Liberal Democrat campaign. I mean, these activists are acting in complete defiance of the party. It's an appalling distraction and I, ho and I hope and fully expect that they will be held to account. Is, is it the case that if, it strikes me that this seems to be the way it often goes with these sorts of, well, they describe themselves as progressive activists. I don't think they are particularly progressive, but they just infiltrate and in small in number, but they have so much clout. It, whenever they go in, in, whether that be corporations, the Labour Party certainly has, uh, seems to be held hostage by well, course, small groups. I mean, the Labour Party have had their problems with Militant in Liverpool and under firm leadership. Uh, Neil Kinnock dealt with them. And then, of course, momentum and anti-Semitism was addressed successfully by Keir Starmer. And, of course, I think what we're seeing here in this, this small group, unrepresentative of, of who we are as a party, is actually a terrific opportunity for the Liberal Democrats to show and embrace the kind of party we really are, for um, the internal mechanisms of the party who ought to be allowed to get on and deal with this particular issue, um, to demonstrate that we are not the party that these people are trying to turn us into being. Mm. So I'm absolutely confident that under Ed Davies' leadership, that these, you know, he's made it very clear, he doesn't want US-style culture wars coming to this country. It would be a disaster yes. if identity politics was to dominate the public narrative. For Liberal Democrats, we're concerned about the NHS. That's why today, as a, uh, in Ed's speech, he's promised to make sure that everyone get, gets access to see a GP when they need it, that he'll recruit 8,000 more doctors for the NHS by rolling out a training programme to make sure that people get the care that they need. But all of this won't ma mean much if all, all this distracting stuff is going on. I mean... Can I, you, it's just a small distraction. But the, I mean, let's be absolutely but you've, clear. You've been let go by your PR firm, haven't you? Well, look, I mean, I've left... I, I've had 10 months of hell. I mean, I'm, I spent 30 years as an award-winning journalist in BBC News um, for the television arm of the World Service. I was the journalist here. I mean, I won in the BBC News Awards of last year, exclusive of the year. I've been, I was nominated by the BBC for a, a Royal Television Society Award. I came second globally or runner-up for news report of last year for exposing the rape and torture of Muslim women in the Xinjiang camps, along with my correspondent colleague and an online writer. So I've surrendered that career to fight for integrity and justice in politics. And what this group uh, have, have attempted to do is to rob the voters of Sutton and Chi. And there are, there are Set over 70,000 voters in Sutton and Cheam, and there were 70 people last, uh, last Tuesday night yeah. who were deciding the future of who they could vote yeah. for. Uh, completely anti-democratic uh, behaviour. Uh, uh, well, I, I believe that, that Christians and people of faith should be allowed to express their faith in the public square. This is why it's free speech. So free, what... it's, it should be a free speech nation. And I, I, I think pe the message needs to be clear. Some people are Christian... Get over it. Yep. OK, well, we've got to wrap up now, but 
what next for you? What, do, what would, you, would you like people to do to help? Well, if you'd like to help me uh, make sure that there is freedom of speech in the public square, back my crowdfunding campaign, because I want to look and see whether I can have legal options. The Equalities Commission um, have given a guide to political parties that say you have to take harassment seriously, and I want to use that guidance to hold activists to account for the kind of intolerant behaviour that they've shown. And that uh, website is there on the screen as we talk. Well, uh, David Campanali, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. After the break of Free Speech Nation, I'll be discussing whether there ought to be a statue of Queen Elizabeth II in Trafalgar Square. See you in a few moments. Woo!